So the project that um, we are uh, talking about today uh, is about how can we implement artificial intelligence in an acute NHS trust and how can we use data which are coming on an everyday basis within an hospital environment to support decision making processes for clinicians. This is a really interesting project that we have, I think. And the reason that I think is interesting is what we're trying to do is to build infrastructure that currently does not exist in an hospital setting to be able to aggregate data at scale from multiple sources within the hospital in a way that is safe and in a way that is privacy preserving. So we want to harmonize and store data within the trust in a way that that data is searchable. So we can make queries on the data, we can extract information from the data, and we can extract value from the data. We want to define a standard software stack and hardware stack that will be able to perform all of these tasks of data harmonization, data curation, and then this software and hardware stack will be used to be able to learn from the data, to make predictions from the data, and at a later stage to be able to improve the care of patients in an hospital setting by utilizing these algorithms to uh, learn patterns that the data contains. So one of the important aspects of any pathway of patients right now is supported by uh, diagnostic imaging. Uh, so diagnostic images are coming from magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, CT scans, ultrasound and so on. And most of those data at the moment are read by radiologists. So growth of data is increasing by over 20% per year. So we clearly have an issue when we are in a situation that we've got more data to read than people to read those data. So we need to have software, tools and solutions which can help all radiologists to make better decisions more quickly. So this project is very much, as I was saying, in terms of data collection and then learning from that data with machine learning and artificial intelligence al algorithms. And if you think about the hardware stack that is necessary for that, the three main components are, one of them is compute, ability to process data very fast, which in this case uses GPUs. And for that, our partner, which is the obvious one, is NVIDIA. Uh, then there is another big component, which is the storage. Medical data is very large and very complex. We need a large store, and also we need store that is fast enough that we can retrieve information very quickly and we can uh, make decisions on that information very quickly. So we need high-performance storage systems that are not just retrieving data for a clinical view. You, we need to retrieve data many, many, many times to be able to make these decisions and train algorithms. And to do that, we need a partner such as NetApp that has really, really advanced storage solutions that are able to fulfill the criteria that we have in terms of data read and write speeds. And the piece of technology that links all of these things together, obviously, is switching technology. And that's where Mellanox comes in. Obviously, they are state-of-the-art providers of, uh, of switching infrastructure. And SCAN is really the glue that brings all of these partners together. Uh, and SCAN's expertise in terms of how do we do this at scale and how do we manage this infrastructure to make it resilient enough and to architect it in a way that is safe and that is resilient, how do we bring these three partners together to create something that is really unique in an hospital setting? To make a project of this scale happen, uh, it needs infrastructure from many, many different partners, many different skill sets. And one thing that I feel very proud about is being able to have pulled all these partners together. It was almost like a, a combined effect and uh, it was that one effect that once all the parties actually got together, there was a great synergy that started to happen. And it feels as if now what we've created is an ecosystem of all the right partnerships uh, to get involved. It's very easy to sell technology, but understanding what do um, doctors want? or what does this environment need? What does healthcare need? Understanding that, understanding the regulation around and how do I work it through is very important and SCAN understands that. Uh, we're, we're delivering a DJX2, which is a supercomputer and AI to do very powerful deep learning uh, uh, models and which is necessary because it's quite compute intense um, um, to uh, run uh, images uh, in, in, in an environment. It's not only the hardware bit, it's also the software bit. We work with libraries, and one of the libraries we look at is, is, is one we developed especially for the, for the healthcare sector, and we call it Clara. And that gives a basis on where you can easily start working, programming, and easily understanding better 
uh, how you can develop. You still need to develop it for your own environment, but uh, you know the speed up is, is enormous. The healthcare sector for NetApp has been a key market for many years. It's one where we service and, and work with many customers around the UK. We've been really focused on building an infrastructure platform in partnership with NVIDIA that is highly scalable for um, artificial intelligence deployments. So people can accelerate their machine learning applications as much as possible. At some point, uh, SCAN decided that it's not enough, the network cannot keep up with the huge amounts of data, and they moved to Mellanox networking, and since then it's been working pretty well. We have an end-to-end uh, -end solution which makes everything pretty simple, and we love this collaboration with SCAN. We're dealing with a lot of data, we're dealing with very, very high performance compute, and therefore we needed a very powerful and fast network, which was essential in order to build what we're building here. You know, it's a very tight combination of compute, storage, and networking. Um, with NVIDIA and NetApp, we have been working for a long time, and our products are well integrated with their products. Uh, SCAN is an expert in what they are doing. They know exactly how to build this uh, pretty complex uh, system. And in order for everything to work well together, we need to work well as a team and it's been super successful so far so we're very grateful for this. So the research, medical advances and you, you take a look at the, the, the economy, you take a look at one of our, you know, other countries' prized possessions which is the NHS. It's all done for the right reasons which ultimately is about, you know, giving and delivering better, better care through operational efficiencies, through early detection. So I feel very privileged uh, to have SCAN part of such an important project. But if you break down such a challenge into smaller, more manageable steps, it seems very achievable. To apply technology within this particular area is very achievable. And to do it with the great minds and the great people of, of, of the partners involved, it seems again very achievable. So in that respect, to deliver and make this best in class is exactly what we're doing now. And I hope that this all becomes a template then that, that can quite easily be rolled out to other institutions and scale uh, you know, the research that's happening. So if you do not have the right partner in an NHS environment, you're very unlikely to get a technology at the end of the day which would be used at scale. We're not talking about a research project, we are talking about a way of transforming an hospital and making it AI enabled. You cannot do that by just only build a proof of concept. You have to build an end-to-end -end solutions. You have to work with the best software architects, the best hardware solution, the best technology provider. So it's really about a partnership between industry, research, universities, and as well uh, with the NHS Trust to be able to deliver a solution which eventually can be commercialized and then roll out across the NHS. So it's been absolutely fantastic to work with those companies, um, especially through the guidance, in fact, of SCAN, who has been supporting not only um, um, the decision um, of, of what would be the appropriate solutions to embed uh, those technology into an NHS trust, but what would be um, the set of technology and how to put them together uh, to build a turnkey solution which hopefully uh, will enable our hospital to become AI friendly. And AI is just only at its beginning in healthcare. Uh, and I think uh, despite the fact that we had quite, I think perhaps too much hype around some of those technology in healthcare, it is definitely going to stay around and it is definitely going to change the way that we are um, taking care of our patients in the next decade. What in this project is so uh, special is that uh, we use a, a federated uh, deep learning uh, model and basically we extract the data and um, you can say it and it keeps secure at the environment where it is so we, we keep that in mind we extract the data use it and put it back in short to say so yeah but the data stays secure in the environment where it is that is very important because that um, that means that you are able to work according to the regulations of what is necessary I think the moment um, and, and this is very special here uh, you have in a mind where research and and the real commercial world work very uh, close uh, together the moment they s they will see the advantage 
and, and that's what's happening here. And you see how it helps you in creating um, uh, a better environment uh, for patients and curing patients in an earlier stage. The moment people will see that, it, it, it will take off. And we're at just at the beginning, and I feel that uh, in a couple of years, uh, long when people see what the results are, uh, everybody will get on it. Where are we going next? There's one part which I can't underestimate, and it, it's never really discussed on, on typical interviews, and that's not the technology, but there's another element, which is a want to do it, a risk, a passion. And that's one key factor that I would class as our catalyst and that there is such a passion and motive to actually want to do this that you end up taking risk. You end up doing all of these things, but it's that passion that actually gets infectious with the partners that we're working with and everyone feeds off on it and all of a sudden all the IP, all of the technology, all of the services that we need start getting unlocked to start delivering the solution. But the solution that we've created is modular in that we can apply it to different industries, different segments, so where I see the future, it's difficult. Um, I'd love to you know, uh, have this and, and reflect back on it in five years' time to see how accurate this is. But what's, what's amazing about it is I think the future of, of analyzing data, rather than calling it AI or data analytics, even call it assistive intelligence, is such that individuals, businesses, are going to start to realise the value that's locked in, the digital trail that we all leave behind. I think regulation will catch up uh, via GDPR getting you know, more and more enhanced. And once that happens, it's all to do with processing and analytics. The fact that data can be mined and processed, it's a new form of energy. So the future is uh, organisations actually accepting that there's energy in data of decision making whatever that decision making may be. And it's through unlocking that potential that the, the data-driven approach uh, will be functions within a traditional business. And I think that's where the future will be.